guys, what's going on? I'm Garrus with Cake. I'll talk more towards the end of the video, but I want to apologize about the lack of uploads recently. I've been working really hard on this video. The game's super long, and <laughs> editing this video wasn't an easy task either. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video. Early development of Persona 5 started way back in 2008, after development studio Atlas finished work on Persona 4, and full development started around 2011 after Catherine, another game by Atlas, was released. A big change in this game as to previous entries is that all of the palaces were handcrafted as opposed to randomly generated palaces. The original concept of this game was to travel all around the world, but in 2011 when a tsunami and earthquake hit Japan, director Katsuna Hishino decided to refocus on Japan as the game's main setting. Finally, after delays and many years of waiting, the game came out on September 16th, 2016 in Japan and April 4th, 2017 worldwide. So what is Persona 5 anyways, and why are we starting with the fifth game in the franchise? Well, the Persona series is actually a spin-off series of another game called Shin Megami Tensei. Most people really don't even talk about Persona 1 and 2 since they lack many staple features like the whole social aspects of later games. Also, Persona 3, 4, and 5 all have unique storylines that aren't directly related, so it doesn't really matter which one you play first. In Persona 5, you play as a... well, he doesn't actually have a name, so I'm just going to call him Joker since that's what his codename is when he's in palaces. You were charged under false accusation that you assaulted a man, and now you're under probation. Because of that, you have to move to a new school and live under this guy's roof. That night, when you go to sleep, you wake up in this room called the Velvet Room. A man named Igor tells you that you need to rehabilitate in order to avoid ruin, and then gives you a fancy new app that allows you to travel to a different dimension. Not knowing what any of that means, you wake up again because that place is actually in your dreams. As Joker walks to school the next day, he meets up with this guy, Ryuji, who complains about how the gym teacher acts like he owns the place. Who does he think he is, the king of a castle? You walk together and somehow end up at a giant castle instead of the school. As you start exploring with Ryuji, you end up getting captured and thrown in a jail cell. Wait a minute. You're telling me this guy? Is this guy? As he threatens to kill you, this happens. Joker awakens his persona, which is his truest form. As you fight away the enemies, you start escaping with Ryuji and run into a cat in a jail cell. He tells you that if you release him, he'll help you escape, so you do. Once you escape, the cat tells you that his name is Morgana and explains everything. The castle you were in was actually in that gym teacher's mind, and that's how he views the school. Morgana then tells you that if you manage to steal his treasure in the castle, that you can change his heart and make him confess his crimes in real life. That's pretty much all I can say about this story since I don't want to spoil too much, but now you know what the game is about at least. The story for this game is so well written, each character has so much personality to them, and you're always wondering who will be the next Phantom Thief to join your party. Half of this game is actually just hanging out with confidants in order to grow your bond with them for perks and snap buffs. After school, you can receive texts from other confidants asking to hang out. Hanging out with these confidants will level up your bond with them, and some story elements are only accessible if you have certain confidants leveled up, so it's a good idea not to ignore them. The other half of the game is spent in palaces, which are those distorted images people have in their minds. There are seven palaces in total, and each one of them has their own gimmick to them, which keeps things fresh. The combat is also really fun, and I never found myself getting tired of fighting enemies like I did in some other JRPGs. You have your physical attack, your gun, your items, and your persona. Physical attacks are attacks that don't use any SP, but also don't do that much damage. Your gun is kind of weird. Once you go into a palace, you only get a certain amount of ammo, which in Joker's case is 16 pistol rounds. You can shoot up to 8 per turn, but you don't get your ammo back until you leave the palace, so use it wisely. Your items are pretty generic. Healing, SP restore, revives, stuff like that. Lastly is the most complex part of a battle, your persona. 
You can catch different personas throughout the game, kind of like Pokemon. Different personas have different moves that can hit weaknesses, so it's a good idea to have at least one of each move in your arsenal. Most of these moves use SP, so you should be cautious of your gauge. Most enemies have a weak point that once you hit them will knock them down. If you knock down all the enemies, you can interrogate them. You have four options here, talk to them to capture them, give you an item, give you money, or an all-out attack. An all-out attack is pretty big damage, and is also one of the coolest things I've ever seen in a video game. Other than palaces and social gatherings, there's also something called mementos. This is probably my least favorite part of the game, and it's not even that bad. Mementos is the collective public's distorted mind, so instead of one guy having a whole castle to himself, this place is a subway station that holds many people's less distorted minds. The point is to try and go down as far as you can while changing people's hearts. Occasionally, you'll get a request from a stranger asking if someone's hearts can be changed. Then, you'll go down to mementos to find that person. I don't really like it because each floor is actually randomly generated, unlike the palaces, so there isn't much level design. Also, there isn't much to do here. You can fight all the enemies you can see to grind, you can drive around collecting treasure, and you can fight a mini boss to change someone's heart. While I do think this is the weakest part of the game, it's not even that bad. By the way, can we talk about how good this game looks? The game isn't the most graphically impressive game since it was started as a PS3 game, but oh my god is it stylish. The UI is incredibly intuitive and even going through the menus is a blast. One thing to know is that some cutscenes are animated in an anime style, which I wasn't the biggest fan of, but I can at least admit that they are well made. I'm just not much of an anime guy myself. Speaking of things this game excels at, Shoji Maguro is a genius. There are so many good songs in this game, it's no wonder they listed him second in the game's opening cutscene. His scores mixed with the voice of Lin and Izumi make some truly great songs. Here's some of my favorites. It's not a game. I'm not a robot. Now we can talk about spin-offs, because trust me, Atlas loves spin-offs. So far, there have been three spin-offs of Persona 5, those being Persona 5 Dancing in the Starlight, Persona 5 Royal, and Persona 5 Scramble. Persona 5 Dancing in the Starlight is a rhythm game with remixes and original songs from Persona 5. I have played it and it's alright. The format works much better on a smaller screen than the TV, but I do enjoy the cool little dialogue between all the Phantom Thieves. <laughs> Next is Persona 5 Royal. This is an enhanced remake of Persona 5 in a sense. It's basically a re-release of Persona 5 with a ton of new content. Persona 4 also did this with Persona 4 Golden. It comes out on October 31st, 2019 in Japan and sometime in March 2020 for American audiences since they have to do translations and English voice acting. Maybe expect an updated review of that game when it comes out. Lastly is Persona 5 Scramble. This is a hack and slash game in the style of the Warrior series. Other games like this include Fire Emblem Warriors and Hyrule Warriors. I really enjoyed Hyrule Warriors, so I can't wait for Persona 5 Scramble to come out. Update! We got more information about Persona 5 Scramble after I wrote the script for this video. Turns out it's a sequel to Persona 5 that takes place half a year after the ending of Persona 5. It comes out on February 20th, 2020 in Japan with no World Wide release date announced yet. It is also coming to the Switch, which I think is pretty cool. Anyways, back to the video.
Persona 5 is one of the best games I have ever played. If you like a long single player game with great story, funny and relatable characters, super stylish videos, and some banger music and super fun combo, then I recommend you play Persona 5. 